a special welcome to you all, family, friends of Dave Feenstra. It is good to be assembled here to um, send our friend to the Lord. It was uh, truly an honor to watch you all in, in that room, just enjoying him. I didn't know him uh, face to face. Uh, I knew of him. And uh, it is a blessing that we can be here and to give him to the Lord in the uh, most honorable way we know how. Um, why don't we have uh, a short silent prayer? Just give your sorrow to God and we'll continue on in the service. in all things we commend our sorrow to you we thank you for our brother Dave we pray that uh, we may sorrow we may, that we may mourn that we may glorify your name in it in Jesus name amen please be seated uh, the rules um, with the pandemic and all of those businesses that were not allowed uh, to sing, so I looked for uh, three particular songs that the family asked me to play. I have recordings of them, and if we've got everything right uh, with the system, we're going to make it work. So please enjoy the music, familiar songs to us all. What a we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. God, you search our hearts and know us through and through. Wherever we are, no matter how near or far, you are there. However we think or feel, no matter how high or low, you know and understand. In our grief and shock, our minds are a tangled mess of conflicting thoughts, and our hearts are overwhelmed with pain. We ask questions for which there seems to be no answer. We experience grief for which there seems to be no consolation. Oh God, we mourn. We cling to you in our mourning. The sorrow seems beyond words. All we need, all we ask in this dark moment is that you hold us close and not let us go. Embrace us. Love us, Lord, even in our terrible pain, for somehow 
we know that in your embrace, healing will finally come. Somehow we know that in your care, our broken hearts will know a gentle mending through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'd like to read for you a few verses from Psalm 139. Psalm 139 will read verses uh, 1 to 12, and then verses 23 and 24. For the chief musician, a psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways, for there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Thus ends the reading of God's holy, inspired, and infallible word. May it be a blessing to you this day and into your lives and into the eternity that God has planned for us. Before we um, come to the message, I realize that we should have played another song before the prayer, and I'm going to do that right now. Abide with me.
day we lay to rest a brother, a father, an uncle, a husband, and a friend. Today I wish to speak to you from the truths of God's word found in Psalm 139. The title of Psalm 139 says, For the chief musician, Psalm of David. King David wrote this psalm, and today we sing it for David. King David was a man after God's own heart. And nobody knows Dave Feenstra better than the God that King David loved. And so today we will dwell upon Psalm 139 as a psalm of comfort for you. Because I know you have questions. I know you wonder about a lot of different things. Today be led in the way everlasting. That's the last phrase of Psalm 139, the end of verse 24, to that fact. And rely on the, pa- on the, on the fact that, that God has answers and he knows. God, God knows Dave. God knows you. His knowledge is eternal. It extends far beyond the physical life and well into eternity. We can't see it, but God can. And he knows. And there is comfort in such divine knowledge used for our existences. The last phrase from the last verse of Psalm 39 says, Lead me in the way everlasting. We can pray this to God because he knows us. We can trust his leadership, especially when everything else in this world remains suspect. Have you ever just said to someone, you don't know me? Have you ever been a little insulted when someone has judged your actions or your character wrongly? Amongst us, this happens all the time. From a human perspective, even the best of intentions can be interpreted wrongly. In fact, it takes a lot of work, a a lot of thought to, to garner up the wanted reaction of someone to our actions. In this, it is profitable to think before we speak and to be receptive to patient words. For me, this is called being an effective communicator. Effective communications happens best when we know each other. Well, God is the effective communicator. King David knows this, and he begins this beautiful psalm with a sense of being known. Verse 1, O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. And this David proclaims that God knows him better than he knows himself. Maybe we cringe a bit when, when someone else says that they know us for humanity Actions do speak louder than words, and we judge by only what we can see and what we can say and what we can do. But God's efforts are far more profound than this. David claims that with an omniscient knowledge that predates creation itself, God has searched him and knows him. Usually the typical human action is to think and then to act. In in this we realize that the thoughts are private and actions are not. In this we understand that thoughts are usually consequence-free, but, but actions carry consequences. In that said, we must admit the link between the heart and the head and the hands. These are linked, and God sees them all. For David proclaims at verse 2, You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even the words that we speak before we speak them are known by our creator. This should bring a tremendous comfort to the Christian in this God is with us. In every thought, in every word, in every deed, in this, in everything we do, our God God is with us, and our God is for us. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. O you who have found in Jesus Christ, 
Oh, you who are found in Jesus Christ, oh, you who have professed your faith before men. Christ says in Matthew 10, 31, So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge him before my Father who is in heaven, and the Spirit is with you. In this as well, Paul says at Romans 8, 26 to 27, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows that the mind of the Spirit, what the mind of the Spirit is, and because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So then David continues on at verse 4, For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. The world will try to run from such a prying God, but David knows that running from our omniscient God is pure foolishness, for he continues at verse 7, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. We need such oversight because the human heart will falter. The burdens we carry, if they are already too heavy, they will get heavier. We will lose sight of, of God's goodness to us, his premeditated love, his guidance, and the world will look dark. You see, this is what sin does. It takes even the most precious thoughts that we can have for one another and for God and for his glory and taint them with pride and envy and hate. And yet, even these things God has seen. And they do not result in our demise, but either come to nothing or are used even for our good, so rooted in God's glory. King David knew the darkness. I'm sure that these days have seem dark to you. King David says with a broken heart and a profound trust in God, verse 11, if I say surely the darkness shall fall upon me, uh, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. From a human and creaturely perspective, others cannot know us. As God searches out and knows us, no hidden thought is hidden from him. No action of ours can be done in the dark, for the darkness and the light are both alike to him. Maybe you have questions this morning about, about Dave or, or about yourself. I would have you simply know that that God knows Dave. God knows you. And so what David, King David proclaims as the foregone conclusion of God at the beginning of this psalm, verse 1, O Lord, you have searched me and know me. He now returns to such things because he knows that without God all is truly lost. He, he, he knows the sin within he knows the tragedy that comes with living without God and, and living against God. He knows that if God were to leave him to himself, that, that only true loneliness would be found. But such will never be found if you are found in Christ, loving him and living your life for his glory alone. Verse 23, King David sings, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. In this, the psalmist wishes to know all things about himself that God knows. That he would show him them. 
that such wickedness would be, would be purged because there are no wicked ways that lead to God's glorious throne of grace. And see if there is any wicked way in me. Verse 24, that's how it begins. Such things must be dealt with. Such things must be paid for. Such things have no place in the kingdom of God and only interfere with God's people getting back to before his holy throne of grace. David knew the darkness, and he was far from perfect. I speak of King David. I speak of each one of us. But we like to paint sometimes King David with a golden brush, but he had his many shortcomings. He was guilty of much sin. The burdens of his sinful heart were overwhelming. And yet, God remained with him and directed him through repentance and forgiveness into that perfect eternal life in spite of his many faults. This is what God does in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit and for us. Some say that these days are particularly dark. Without the pandemic, this room would have been full. These things have their effect and and will continue to do so, but, but while in these days and in such a state, I commend you to realize what the Heidelberg Catechism gives us in an answer when it asks what is your only comfort in life and in death. And in that answer, God shows that you are not your own. You belong body and soul in life and in death to your faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all your sins with his precious blood and has delivered you from the tyranny of the devil. He also watches over you in such a way that not a hair can fall from your head without the will of your Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for your salvation because you belong to him. Christ, by his Holy Spirit, also assures you of eternal life and makes you wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. The dear friends and family of David Feenstra, Dave Phoenix Feenstra, God knows you. He knows what you need. He knows when you need it. He sent his own son to be born as one of us so he could qualify as fully human to take away all of our sins. And then having died for these sins and then having been raised anew unto eternal life, And as the eternal king of humanity, he sends his Holy Spirit to work in our hearts a special redemption so that we can have our place once again by his side. Why? Why such a gift offered to humanity? God declares such things because he loves you. He loves Dave and above all he knows what we need to be led in the way everlasting may God bless you and keep you as you lay your friend your father to rest amen and I'll play one more song Great is thy faithfulness, and then we'll pray. And that will be the conclusion of this morning's service.
Let's pray. Father in heaven, we draw close to you on this Saturday morning, mourning the loss of our brother Dave. Hear us, O Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, O Lord. You raise the dead to life to give eternal life to our brother through the power of your resurrection. Hear us, O Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. We trust you to bring our brother into the joys of heaven. Hear us, O Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and nourished at your table. May we see him through the eyes of faith in the fellowship of your saints in glory. Hear us, O Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life, our hope through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray this through Christ. Christ. 